Uh, so my name is Malibly Gothic, welcome to my channel. And I'm aware that I should probably do an introduction, introduce myself to people who are new to the channel if you happen to stumble across it. What I like to do is a variety of artsy things. I have a history of jewelry, painting, drawing, sculpting, basket weaving, if you name it, and it's relatively artsy, I've probably tried it in some form or another. Uh, this channel exists to basically document my creative chaos that naturally happens and put it together in a fun way to share with anybody who might be interested. So if you are interested, feel free to subscribe, give me a like, you know, engage if you want. You don't have to. Um, but if you want to see more mildly spooky related things is what I tend to steer towards, but also just artistic content in general, um, stick around because that's what I'll be making. So. As you can see, what I have in front of me today are a bunch of my paintings. Uh, if you'll notice, the title of this video probably mentions watercolor. Uh, none of these are watercolor. Actually, that's a lie. This one is watercolor. This is the only painting here that is watercolor. Uh, if you like my random painting stand, I don't have any other way to crop these up. This is, this is a watercolor painting. This is of a uh, lake that my boyfriend's family, my boyfriend's friend's family owns. Uh, we went down there and I took some really pretty pictures of the sunset. Um, what I want to do today is a watercolor painting, is another one. Uh, I've done a variety of paintings in the past, these are some of my favorites. This one I just think is really pretty. Uh, this one I think is adorably cool. Um, skeleton hand wine glass. I've also got this one in the back here. This is another landscape piece that I've done and I have a skull. This is a painting of that headdress that I showed a couple videos back. So just kind of some fun. I like to set the stage with something, otherwise I don't know what to do in the intro to these videos. But I've got two watercolor palettes. I've got a normal one. This is a metallic one. Uh, both of these are what I used to create this painting with, that I used to create this painting. And overall, it should be a pretty straightforward video. This is really just kind of showing off the process of doing a watercolor painting, at least how I do them. I have never taken a professional class in watercolor painting. I've never taken a professional class in any kind of painting. I don't think. Uh, my mother is an artist. She actually has a Master of Fine Arts degree. And I think watercolor is the type of painting that I grew up doing. Like we would sit out on the porch and she would, ha I would, she would have her own sketchbook and her pencils. She had colored pencils, watercolor pencils, and watercolor and would be doing all of these beautiful, amazing things because she's incredibly talented. And I had my little sketchbook and I was drawing really bad flowers. I drew a lot of flowers. So I, I have a lot of history as, like with watercolor. It's something I guess I went away from for a while and went to acrylic, which is what these are. And then eventually kind of came back around to watercolor. It's a very interesting medium. There's a couple like tips and tricks that I don't really know necessarily but there's kind of a different thought process you do with watercolor because the colors blend differently you have to be more careful if you're trying to layer things it's really interesting and i quite enjoy it so the image i've chosen to draw today is one that i took when i was in japan in 2017 and it's of an atori gate i apologize if i mispronounced that but they're these beautiful uh gate structures i'll probably put an image of it uh on screen the picture and it's I like to do landscapes when I paint watercolor. I think it just works out the best. I think it's some of the uh, prettiest imagery to try to capture, especially if there's a sunset or a sunrise involved. But I typically do paint landscapes when I do watercolor, and this is kind of a landscape, kind of not. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. I think it will turn out super well, and I hope you enjoy the process. I'll try to explain my thought process when it comes to watercolor as we're going through the fast forward, and then, uh, probably where I went wrong or, you know, things like that, because nothing ever goes perfectly. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's get started. So as with most things, uh, I tend to start out with a pencil sketch. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea, bad idea in watercolor. I do know you have to be careful of your edges because the graphite will spread or can color your actual paint if you're not careful and using a very light color. So I know it's very, very hard to see with this sketch, but I didn't want to leave it out. 
I am working with a canvas and not notebook or like sketchbook paper. So I'm being extra careful to actually make very, very light pencil marks because it is very, very hard to erase on canvas. You don't want to dent the canvas. You can't really get that pressure that you need. So if you do want to start with a pencil drawing on canvas, you need to be kind of aware that you probably get one chance, maybe two, if you were drawing super lightly and the eraser can pick it up. So I typically work with a very soft pencil so I can get a very easy dark mark, but I was actually working with about, I think, uh, a 2B pencil for this. It wasn't anything that was particularly soft or hard. And once I get that started, I kind of just go right into it. I have an idea of the colors that are in this palette, so I started with this very intense red-orange because there is a spot in the picture that has much darker red notes and so I kind of just started with that and then most of this is a process of trying to pick and blend the oranges appropriately to kind of get that color that I wanted. Unfortunately my skewed perspective I went wrong from the beginning that was entirely built into the foundation of my drawing as I mentioned as I'll get to in the outro but you'll kind of see as I build it that it's not exactly centered it's a little rough but I kind of I, I do think it still ended up turning out okay. Uh, if you'll notice that color at the bottom i actually ended up going to a lot it's this weird not greenish brown i don't know it ended up being super useful for most of my colors it's a very earthy kind of brown tone so i kept going back to it a lot um, another mistake i made super early was doing the crossbar before the vertical poles because the vertical poles are supposed to basically the crossbar is going between them and so even in the final product i think it's still visible that crossbar is still visible like those lines behind the poles which is a little unfortunate but it's not the end of the world i tried to fix it with some shading and try to adjust for that but that is another thing with pencil like those lines will be there so try not to put a line there if you don't actually want it there what i should have done is erased those intersecting pieces of those vertical bars mountains uh i tend to keep them pretty simple when i start with watercolor i also in this painting chose to completely neglect and ignore the city like buildings that are actually on the shoreline you can see them in the original picture uh, if i was doing acrylic maybe i wouldn't have but just trying to get those lighter colors in the image it was just going to be really hard to try to section them out from the mountain before i did the mountain so i just kind of chose to ignore them uh, one thing you'll see me do consistently is i paint the edge of the canvas i hate hanging a canvas that has like raw edges that is not painted. I don't typically frame a lot of my canvas work when it's hanging in my apartment, so I paint the edges in order to give it a nicer finished look. Going in with the blue, I started super light. I actually kept a lot of the colors for this a lot lighter than they are in the original image. I think it has a little bit of a better look. It's easier with watercolor and I'm always afraid of going too dark. I would rather start lighter and then build up the intensity of color. Uh, if you ever can't see my brush on screen, I'm color testing off to the side on a paper towel, but I decided to try to darken some of the, the base of the tower and eventually had a significant bit of color testing because I was trying to find the correct shade to color the, the shade part of the gate and to actually help get some of that dimension. I stuck with, again, pretty light colors, and I mention it, um, I'll get to it in the outro, sort of. Uh, I completely forgot to paint the reflection of the gate in the water. And it's killing me. I'll probably go back and add it at some point. Um, probably won't be in a video. But it is killing me now looking at this, watching me paint it, and then being so happy with it. And having completely forgotten to do the reflection. Because that's one of the most important things uh, people try to do with water is in order to really make it look like water you need that reflection in there and so you'll notice it kind of looks like it's just sitting on top of it instead of i don't know i don't really feel like it has a presence probably could have fixed that one of those things that i think would have helped is the reflection but regardless as you can see i found a color that i'm relatively pleased with and so i'm using it to start adding some shading to the side pieces trying to get the dimensions of that to look a little bit better. I ended up using, I think, most of the oranges or the browns that I have. And it was this point I realized the orange wasn't quite the vibrancy that I wanted. And so I actually chose to go over only parts of it with a yellow because there is a 
different in intensity of the yellow on the actual image. You can see that not all of it is like this bright yellow orange, only some of it. And so I tried to stick true to that. So one of the hardest things to do in watercolor is white. If you need it to be white, I recommend not painting it. Uh, that's why my approach with the sky is uh, I leave these open areas because those are the clouds. I can't really paint white back on it. White doesn't really show up very well in watercolor. I think it's better if you're using your white to lighten or mix a color. But as far as just straight up painting white, it's not like acrylic where you can get this super, super stark white. If you want larger swatches of white, you are likely best to just leave it unpainted. And so those edges of the clouds, I thought it was drying a little harsh, and so I went back with just a wet brush to soften it up and to move it back. And so that's what's really interesting with watercolor, is even once you put it down and it looks dried, if you go back over it with a wet brush, you can actually disturb and then spread just a little bit of the paint. And if you're trying to get a fuzzy or smoother edge, it's actually quite helpful. I was quite pleased with the color that I ended up getting for this crossbar. Uh, I think it worked out super well. It's a mixture of two colors, and I think it was just the right one. And you'll see, well, I don't know if you saw the mixing, but I ended up using the same color for the small squares that go on top of those other four poles. So a lot of this is trying to get that shading right, which arguably ended up okay, but I think it was a process to try to get there. There's a lot of small details around the top. There's these cylinders that are on the top of those two very tall posts. And I made the mistake of trying to detail those before I'd finished all of the shading for everything that needed to kind of go around them. And so I kept ended up smudging and like blurring out the detail that I was trying to put into them, which was just really frustrating. So I also kind of realized that the color that I was using wasn't really intense enough as far as the shading that I actually wanted. So once I was done giving the the other four poles their little caps, I ended up going back in with a very dark brown and a very, very fine brush to be the dark shadow color for everything else. Oh, I forgot. Um, the little black piece on top uh, has some characters and stuff. I do get the gold involved. I kept it very simple because I was worried about, you know, I'm never gonna get it legible on this scale. So I just kind of left it up to interpretation. But so here I'm going back in with that very dark brown because I decided that the shadow wasn't harsh enough and I wanted to get just that little bit more definition to it and get some contrast going. I did my best to get curved shadows around the poles. I'm not sure if they were really that curved, but in the image you can tell that they are curved and there is a pretty distinct light source coming from the left hand side. So I tried to capture that and here's where I make a very stupid mistake. So there's this these things in the image that are on the front of the, you know, the front of the first two poles. And when I got to this point, I was like, oh, well, I think it needs to be a little lower down. I didn't realize at the time, and I don't know how, that the front, the pieces sticking out of the front are the cross beams going all the way through the thing. And I've already put the cross beams in, so I do eventually have the ability to kind of, again, use water and brush away the color that I had put down to put down new color. So luckily I was able to save it, but man, that was a stupid error I should never have made in the first place. A little detail that I think is giving it a lot of dimension is that very dark line underneath both of those top beams. Um, you can actually tell then that it has a thickness. It's not just a wafer thin line. It actually has some depth and dimension going further back than what you can see. So this is where it really starts coming to life with all of the little bits of shadow and shade, uh, trying to really emphasize that under shadow from the overhang which I think really helped sell it. Uh, and I think now it's more obvious how not centered it is, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It just definitely could have been drawn more centered. You can see that right side of the bottom of the lower of the two cross beams on top. is just a little too short. So, and here's where I'm trying to put white in the top and it's not really working. 
there's there's just nothing really happening and so that's when i decided that it was going to be better to go with a darker color to highlight that edge because that is actually in the image instead of trying to lighten it just use the color that was already there as the lightest color and go back in with an even darker color to just add that contrast that i was missing I did choose to keep most of the colors in this overall pretty light because I wanted I wanted the gate to be the focal point, the forefront, the shining, you know, piece, piece de resistance or whatever, if you will. And so here's where I realized my mistake. Again, luckily, if you are careful with it, you can kind of fix watercolor with just water on your brush and very lightly kind, kind of trying to lift that color away in a paper towel. I do not recommend it if you can avoid it because it is a little risky, but it's not impossible. So we're actually kind of getting into the end of this, some final details for those sidebars. Um, this is where I choose to add that kind of sand color to the bottom of this because at this point the bottom of the canvas really didn't have any color. And what it should have had was the reflection of the gate in the water. But I can just continue to be mad about that and add it later. Uh, I do think the sand color was a nice touch, and I guess I got a little distracted and carried away with that. But just trying to add some more contrast and emphasis, a little bit of detail. But again, I was trying to really keep the background simple as I did want the gate to be the primary focus because it is the focal point of the image. And just for fun, this gate was found on the island of Mirajima. In Japan, we took a ferry from Hiroshima, which was the, where we were staying and went to this island. There's a beautiful temple there, there's a lot of food, there's these deer that are not afraid of people at all, which was kind of hilarious. Uh, but it's, it's absolutely beautiful, just stunning countryside. Definitely was a highlight of the trip overall. So back to the painting, what I'm doing is adding some texture and dimension to the mountains. I love doing, you know, multiple layers in depth when it actually gets to painting mountains, which I think is a lot of fun. And now just some gold detail for the black piece, which I think absolutely brought it all together. You know, it's always the little details that make it pop when you remember them, unlike how I forgot the reflection in the water, but it's fine. <laughs> I think some of the final details, I went back over and tried to emphasize the sky a little bit more. I also like to paint my signature. I think it's fun versus writing it. I know it's not going to be as clean, but I think it's more fun to paint my signature on. So that's what I did there, and then I realized I didn't paint the top, so gotta, gotta add the sky bit to the top. And then I just brought a little bit of that color down to do some little, little bit of final pop to it. Other than that, this is basically the final piece, and I hope you enjoyed. So here we are. Uh, this is the final product. Uh, I realized that through some of the, or with the lighting, that sometimes the watercolor glare was a little rough, so I'll try to get some up-close pictures that hopefully I've already put in by now. Um, I tried to capture, the water is a lot clearer than it is in the actual image, you've probably noticed, but I wanted to keep it light. I really didn't want to take it too heavy and muddy, but I still got kind of that sandy color and texture at the bottom, trying to fade that in. Uh, you'll notice that I made a really stupid mistake towards the end with those uh, pole pieces in the front. Luckily, I realized and was able to kind of fix it, but, you know, it's all right. It ended up working out. Um, the proportions are a little off, which I realized towards the end. Um, it's it's not centered. Like, the, the, the swoop is not exactly what it should be, but I think that's okay because I'm actually quite proud of the color. Um, I believe I heard somewhere that yellow is considered one of the hardest colors to shade, which is why you see so many Renaissance paintings. I am shedding. Which is why you see so many Renaissance paintings of like yellow fruit, is because yellow is notoriously, so I've heard at least, probably in oil painting specifically, one of the hardest colors to shade. And I think orange kind of goes with that because instead of black, you really have to get the right brown in order to get a like a proper like shade or a gradient and so I tried a couple different to get the right look to it 
it's a relatively simple painting, but to me that's kind of what watercolor always ends up being. Watercolor is for softer, a little less harsh around the edges, kind of more of a feeling of the image than necessarily the perfect stark outline of it, uh, which I think is okay. I think in that spirit I captured it very well. Could I probably get a much more um, like definitive structured image? I probably could, but to me that's not what watercolor is. Watercolor is very organic and fluid, hence the water. So I'm pleased with it and I hope that was kind of fun to watch. This should be a relatively quick and simple little video about watercolor. Uh, this is really fun. Uh, I do enjoy watercolor. It's actually not until recently that I got watercolor to use. Um, it's pretty cheap. I think each of these were about 10 or $12 uh, as far as palettes go, so it's not the worst. Watercolor is definitely interesting. It's very different than acrylic. Each style, each type of paint comes with its own set of pros, cons, challenges, and little quirks. So this was watercolor. I hope to do more of this in the future. Maybe I'll get my mom to do some kind of literal watercolor tutorial. That could be fun. Mom, you want to be in a video? We'll see. But until then, um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to see more artsy content, again, you can subscribe if you want. Give me a like if you think this was pretty. And otherwise, I'll have some new form of artistic something or other next week. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one.